All right, so welcome. So this is the um, Waitley Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for July 1st, and it's a little bit after 6.40 p.m. We have uh, two items on the agenda tonight, and I understand there are some attorneys present. So we'll, uh, we'll proceed the, to read the legal notice to start, and then we'll um, ask people to identify themselves who are gonna be speaking on behalf of the uh, Petitioner and the abutter, um, and then we'll uh, we'll create an orderly sequence. So, Mary, why don't you read the legal notice? Uh, the legal notice reads: Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, July first, twenty twenty one, at six forty p.m. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom. <laughs> The rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect, and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. On May 13th, 2021, Debilitating Medical Condition Treatment Centers Incorporated applied for a special permit to use an existing commercial storefront located at 424 State Road. <gasps> We're not on video. Shops and owned by Old State Road LLC for retail sale of adult use marijuana. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Waitley Zoning Bylaws as provided by Mass General Laws Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. And after that, follows the access uh, via Zoom or phone information for these hearings, tonight's meeting. And uh, it's signed Roger P. Lipton Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals, and ran in the Greenfield Recorder, June 17th and 24th. Okay, thank you. So <clears throat> normally I ask the petitioner at this point if there are any uh, objections to the way that has been written or any uh, changes that they note that they want to bring to our attention. Yes, Mr. Lipton. My name is Isaac Fleischer. Uh, I'm counsel for the petitioner. Um, and the street address is correct, 424 State Road. Um, there are two parcels with that street address next door to one another. And the notice references the owner of the of uh, the neighboring parcel. So the the owner referenced in the um, in the notice should be Yankee Candle, not um, uh, 424 State Road, LLC. So can I ask you, do the um, individual units there have separate designations, unit one, unit two, uh, anything that would d distinguish them from one another? They, they do not, they have they have different lot. I mean, the they have different assessors, map, and lot numbers. They are they're on separate parts. Uh, they they actually are on separate buildings, but they don't have separate uh, mailing addresses. They're both uh, 424 State Road. Um, and if uh, if the petitioner were to locate there, they would most likely uh, request a, a different mailing address, uh, if possible. Excuse me, did you say they were in two two different buildings? Yeah, I believe that they have a connection in between, but they're each they're standalone buildings. Thank you. Okay, so the name of the owner is is noted as, as Yankee Candle. And um, we had the benefit of you submitting a an email which uh, did cite uh, chapter 48, section 11. Did you want to talk about the requirements there? Yeah, so the, the notice requirements in, in chapter 40A um, don't include, uh, do, don't include a disclosure of the owner. Um, the notice requirements uh, re require the, the property be to be identified by street address. Um, which is what we did, and it, given the circumstances, it it is important to to distinguish between two locations with identical street addresses. Um, the 
the abutters list that was used for mailing out notice to all interested parties is based on the correct parcel. So the correct interested parties did receive notice with the property identified by its street address as required in 40A. Um, ownership is not one of the requirements, but I think in this case, it, it does create some confusion if a person were to cross-reference the street address with, uh, with the ownership um, of the property. Uh, so the map and parcel, I'm looking at the application, says 24-3. So is that the correct map and parcel? That is not the correct, it's 24 lot two, which is what was used for the, uh, for the abutters notice. How did the abutters notice end up being correct with the application itself not correct, do you know? Chris, do you wanna to speak to yeah, that? I can, um, the abutters list is requested from the assessor's office. Um, and so that request was sent with uh, the identification of the correct block and lot number, um, but we included the incorrect number on the application form itself. So that, that's a simple explanation for why the two can be different. Got it, okay. All right, so normally we would um, get our procedures to open up the floor to the petitioner to tell us what they are trying to accomplish, why they think the bylaws allow it. Here, um, quite unusually, we have an objection right off the bat from um, the uh, owner named in the application who's represented by counsel here. And I see him appearing by Zoom. So as I explained to both counsel, uh, I, Felt, felt it fair to give each side an opportunity to just address this procedural issue first. And then the board, of course, the other board members can ask questions. And then we'll, um, in open session here, uh, decide how we want to handle the procedural question and then what our next step is going to be. So, uh, counsel for the um, Bold State Road LLC. Uh, yes. Can, you, can everyone hear me? Can the board hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you this evening. Um, my name is David Yulian. I'm an attorney with the law firm Vicente Cedarberg LLP. I'm here tonight on behalf of my client, Toro Verde, Massachusetts 3, uh, and I'm joined by several individuals affiliated with the company, including Toro Verde's president and CEO, William Beats, and John Bonavita, who is a uh, principal of the company, Old State Road LLC that owns the property that Tor Verde is leasing for its marijuana retail business in Whaley. Um, I think it's important just to try to give you a little bit of background on who Tor Verde is and how we got to where we are today. So Tor Verde is a Massachusetts corporation that's been working since 2018 to site an adult use retail marijuana dispensary at property located on a portion of 424 State Road and owned by Old State Road LLC. Uh, Tor Verde submitted a special permit application in late 2018 and at a public hearing in January 2019, this board voted to grant Tor Verde a special permit to operate a retail marijuana dispensary at this property. Um, again, that special permit decision clearly notes that Old State Road LLC is the owner of record for this property. Um, since then, Toro Verde has received a retailer license from the State Cannabis Control Commission and expects to commence op retail operations this fall. So late last week, uh, John Bonavita, who's the owner of Old State Road LLC, informed Toro Verde that he received a legal notice from the board stating that an applicant called debilitating medical conditions had applied for, uh, and I quote, a special permit to use an existing commercial storefront located at 424 State Road Sugarloaf Shops and owned by Old State Road LLC for the retail sale of marijuana, and that the public hearing for this special permit was scheduled for July 1st. So as written, anyone reading this legal notice could reasonably believe that another applicant is now seeking a special permit from the board to operate the same type of retail marijuana business on property that has the same address and the same ownership as the property that Toro Verde already received a special permit approval for from the board for its own retail marijuana dispensary. 
Now, after speaking with John and further inquiry into this issue, it's now clear that another applicant debilitating medical conditions is not in fact seeking special permit approval to use an existing commercial storefront at 424 State Road and owned by Old State Road LLC, as was stated in the legal notice. Instead, as, as council points out, Developing, debilitating medical conditions is proposing to site a competing retail marijuana dispensary at the same address of 424 State Road, but on a parcel that's immediately adjacent to Torre Verde's parcel and is actually owned by Yankee Candle Company rather than Old State Road LLC. So it's our position that this legal notice does not comply with the statutory requirements in the Zoning Act in Mass General Law Chapter 40A for notice of a public hearing on a special permit and is therefore invalid because it does not sufficiently identify the premises that are the subject of the special permit application. And then as a result, it does not provide abutters and other interested parties in the local community with proper notice of the proposal being considered by the board or a fair opportunity to be heard. As council mentioned, section 11 of the Zoning Act um, requires that proper notice must contain, among other things, adequate identification of the location of the area or premises that is the subject of the petition. Although the notice does state that the dispensary is proposed to be located at 424 State Road, it fails to identify the specific parcel of 424 State Road. And this is particularly relevant information when you consider that another retail marijuana dispensary is also operating at the same address. And more importantly, the identity of the correct parcel to be used by debilitating medical conditions is further muddied by the fact that the notice incorrectly states that the property is owned by Old State Road LLC rather than the true owner Yankee Candle Company. Now, I'm not trying to persuade the board that every public meeting notice that contains imprecise language or minor factual errors are, are invalid. However, the defects in this notice are particularly material and problematic because as I mentioned before, Torre Verde has already obtained a special permit from the board to use this existing commercial storefront at 424 State Road and owned by L Old State Road LLC for the retail sale of marijuana. So a notice that states that another applicant's also seeking to do the same type of use at the same address owned by the same company causes confusion for members of the public who may be left wondering whether this hearing is to discuss a transfer or modification of the permit that was previously granted to Tor Verde, or whether this hearing is actually to discuss a competing applicant's proposal to locate a second dispensary at the same address. And if, a, if the notice causes an abutter to believe this public hearings is about Tor Verde's existing business rather than a second dispensary, an individual may decide not to attend this hearing and potentially miss an opportunity to weigh in on a proposal that could result in two competing dispensaries at the same address. And this confusion resulting from the flawed language is, is not just theoretical. I, I recently learned that at least two members of the local community, including John Bonavita, the, the owner of Old State Road LLC, assumed incorrectly that the notice related to Torre Verde's existing dispensary rather than a second new dispensary at the same property. Now there's well-established case law in Massachusetts about the importance of full, about the full and adequate notice of a public hearing on a zoning matter. As the SJC stated in Moore versus Cataldo, full notice is necessary to enable all those interested to know what is projected and to have an opportunity to protest. And the failure to satisfy the provisions concerning notice mm -hmm. of a hearing matter ordinarily will make the board's action invalid and without effect. So in light of all the above, uh, as, I met, as I mentioned previously, Tor Verde is respectfully requesting that the public hearing appearance for debilitating medical conditions be rescheduled until a time such that the legal notice that adequately identifies the premises to be used by debilitating medical conditions and accurately informs the local community about the proposal is properly noticed. The public deserves a full and fair opportunity to weigh in on whether they want two separate marijuana retail businesses directly next to each other. So thank you for your time and consideration and I'm happy to try to answer any questions the board might have. So one question I have is, does your client have a position on whether um, they will ultimately object to this new application? Assuming we, for argument's sake, that we granted your request and caused them to 
publish a new notice and the new notice was published and we were here at another hearing, would your client be objecting to a, a competitor next door? So we, you know, we intend on attending the meeting and uh, to the extent that we have concerns about um, the propriety of having two dispensaries at the same property and, and the problems that could result from that in terms of traffic and parking and um, security and just the, the general idea of having two dispensaries next to each other, you know, we, would, we would plan on voicing those concerns. But at this time, we feel that that's not appropriate to get into that until the legal notice is fixed so that the public has an opportunity to actually attend uh, the meeting. Understood. And so then, is it fair to say that you would be satisfied, and I'm not saying that we're going in this direction at all, but I'm just trying to sound you out. <clears throat> you would be satisfied if we um, required a new legal notice, and here we are July 1st, there would be time, uh, presumably, to get on the next meeting, which is August 5th. Uh, you would be satisfied with that amount of a delay? Uh, we, we would be satisfied with that. And, and again, we would request that the legal notice be um, revised to, to accurately describe the property and, and the ownership of it um, so that there's no confusion as, as to you know, exactly which property is the subject of debilitating medical condition special permit. So um, we would be satisfied uh, if, if that was done and, and, and an August hearing was the next scheduled hearing. So then... Um... I'm going to give other, other board members a chance in a minute, but as long as I'm thinking of it. Uh, Isaac, do you have a, a, a retort to that position? And so, and, and what is what is so um, troubling about a 35-day a delay to your client? Well, um, I would let my client answer that. I mean, if we needed to delay for 35 days, then we would reapply. I, I just want to be clear that what's it is at 424 State Road. What's being asked is that we revise our notice to change the, um, uh, to, to revise the ownership of, of the parcel. Um, and ownership of the parcel, like I said, is just not one of the criteria under 40A. So, I mean, I, I, want, I want to make sure that anybody with an interest in this uh, is made uh, aware of the hearing, but I think that that I think that that was sufficiently done by sending out the notice to all of the abutters within 300 feet, identifying the property with the street address, and I don't think that uh, changing the name of the ownership would have any impact on uh, who would or would not uh, come come to the meeting. Okay, did you say you wanted your client to add something to this or, or not at this point? Well, I mean, I'm, if, if I, my answer was that we don't want to delay and if that we need to delay, we'll, we'll delay because we need, to, we need to make sure that this hearing is valid. I, mean, I agree with that completely. My, my <laughs> opinion for, of my interpretation of 40A is that a, a defect in the identity of the owner is not a defective notice. Okay, so board members, anybody have questions? Well, Roger, my concern is that there has been a, a, a long period of time between when we granted the permit to Toro Verde and the opening of their store. And it is possible for people to look at the legal notice and say, oh, it must be a change in the ownership because it's been so long since they were granted the thing. I don't think we should move forward on, on when there's any haziness about um, the legal notice or any other part. We have tread way, way out into these waters um, regarding marijuana, and I want to make sure that we do it right. I, I think that there's uh, uh, a reason to um, request that they redo and uh, that we postpone for 35 days. Yeah, I, I have to agree with Bob on this one. I, I think, you know, given how, how new this industry is to Waitley, the fact that we now are looking at two dispensaries in the same position, I, I want to uh, make things as transparent as possible for the people who, the people of town. Um, so yes, 
I'm going to say we, I would suggest we delay. Well, so, um, Okay, Roger, what, what does the host community agreement say for location? That well, was approved, that was approved about a, what, a month ago by the select board. That is an interesting question. Was attached, was attached to the application. I don't remember the exact wording of the location. I was studying that this morning, Fred, actually, because uh, Chris was kind enough to send it over. And... <laughs> I circled a number of parts of it. I took question marks on it myself because it recites um, the other locations to start with that DMC TC has either been permitted for or is applied for a permit for. And then it goes on to say DMC TC proposes to operate a commercial licensed marijuana retail establishment at 424 State Road, currently under purchase and sale agreement by DMCTC. Um, so at that point, I was, I was, as I was reading, I was thinking, oh, they're going to say who they're, under, who the purchase and sale agreement is with. Now, now the town may have typed this up. So that didn't answer the question there. It just said 424. It doesn't say who the owner is. The other two mentions of what DMC TC is doing in town does mention who the owners of those properties are. So we have a we have a mixed bag there, which all it says, Fred, is 424 State Road. So I mean I guess you can point a finger at whoever whoever established the addresses in that building didn't do anybody a favor down the road by making them identical. Um, and that just seems to to give evidence to the fact that it's a little murky and I think we should clarify it. So, so my feeling is, um, and I've actually listened to both attorneys and, and moved a little bit in each direction, both when I was reading their, um, their emails and, and listening to them today. When I first, so here's how we normally do it. The application comes in, we don't have a professional full-time staff. Mary's a part-timer, she's our secretary. The rest of us are volunteers. She sends proposed legal notices over to me with the application. I, I take a look at them and I approve them or not. I, I said to her at the time, I said, isn't there already a, um, a grant of a permit at that location? Now, somebody got back to me and said, is it a different, it's next door. So I said, okay, well, then publish it. So that's how it got published. It basically tracks very closely or identically the application. Um, so there's no uh, there's no editing on the board's part. The notice follows the application. Um, now, I look at the general law, is uh, 48 section 11, and I. Roger, I'm having a little trouble. Uh, yeah. I think because I have crispy speech. <laughs> I have something on my screen here. I'll, I'll on my keyboard somehow block the mic. I'll speak up. Yeah, forty eight section eleven. Uh, to my surprise, does not require the name of the owner. Uh, so that's another little uh, wrinkle. But our application does ask for it. Has always asked for it. Right. And I think it's actually useful information, especially with some of the other issues that the board has run into lately. So it is asked for in the application. It does appear in the notice because it tracks what was in the application. I think there can be uh, grounds for some confusion so that, and I think this actually helps both sides. I think you'd have a better pristine application and, and, and petition that would not be subject to a potential appeal if we corrected this right out of the gate. And so I would, I would vote with the, apparently the other two board members uh, and we're a three person board. Uh, so that's gotta be unanimous. I would vote that we allow the petitioner to amend their application. No new filing fee required, but just do an amendment, get it in 
through the town clerk process, and that'll get it over to Mary, who can then uh, publish. But that's going to be at the expense of the petitioner of that publication. We actually have a new application that just came into effect, I think, in the month of June, that passes all publication costs on to the petitioner. Um, but I'm, I'm sure that's small potatoes in the big scheme of things. So that we would then correct the two known defects in the application, namely the, <clears throat> the uh, assessor's book and page and the name of the owner. And then seems like there's nothing to correct on 424 State Road because there is no other variable, uh, but that we get it right. And then we reconvene on, in, our, uh, in August, August 5th. So why don't I then put this to a motion and we'll do it in a formal way. Unless did, you, did you say there would be, sure. Lynn needs to know, or Amy needs to know that we're not charging another fee for this correction to the application? We are charging a fee. We are charging, well, not the ad fee. I thought you said the application fee. The application fee, but the ad fee. Uh, you're, you're breaking up a little. Did you say no application fee? No to the application fee. Yes to the publication fee. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. So I would move, well, let me first ask, anything from the either party before we proceed to vote on this issue? Uh, nothing, nothing from my side. Nothing from me as well. Okay. So I would move that the board um, close the public dialogue portion of the meeting and proceed to um, cast their votes on whether the applicant, applicant should amend their application and allow us to republish the notice for the August 5th meeting. I will I'll second. I vote yes. All right, so then well, it's, it's time to cast our votes. So I would cast my vote in favor of that, uh, that motion that they amend and republish. And I will as well, I know Bob just has. Yes. Okay, so that's it. So we're, we're gonna um, allow you to do that, uh, get that amended application. It's on the website, Chris, if you wanna take a look at it. If not, Mary can help you find it. It's, it's this slightly new uh, application. Uh, so the application form is in fact different now. It's, yeah, it looks yeah. similar, but there's right. just a couple of boxes that are a little different. And it has that language about the advertising being passed on in all situations to the applicant. Right. And uh, get in there quickly. And there's, there's enough time to get on the August 5th agenda and then we'll see you again. Absolutely. Tomorrow, if possible. If not, we'll, we'll certainly take care of it next week. All right, great. Thanks for everybody's time. Good seeing Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so board members, we have downtime until 7.30. Do we want to look at the minutes? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm just, we still, we do have people in the hearing um, for our 7.30 hearing. Um, just letting people know that. So our minutes. So I have not had a chance to read all these minutes. Bob, have you? Yes, I have. I have as well. So what's the rule on that? Do we have to, is it a majority rule to accept them? I am, I think it's probably a good idea, you know, whether it's a rule or not, it's probably a good idea that we all read them. Yeah. Um, and just in, I mean, we all see different things. I think it's about this from the perspective of a writing teacher, in terms <laughs> of what, what our memories are and. Um, well, if you wanna, if you wanna take 10 minutes as a break, I'll read them during the 10 minute break. 
Okay. Why don't I why don't I pause our recording and we are now about to take a, a minute reading break. <laughs> so yes, I had a chance to read the minutes and I approved them also. Um uh the March minutes, uh Mary, you've misspelled Bruce Tutin's last name in the segment on the Hannum property. It's T U T U N. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, my only other correction was in the June 3rd minutes should reflect the vote of Deborah and I and Kristen to accept the withdrawal without prejudice. Uh, let me get this one. Oh, Bob, thank you. I went right by that one. Right. Let me just get to that point. I thought I had read so carefully. This is why it's always good to get multiple readers. <laughs> Okay, um, yep. let's see. Yes, Kristen and Deborah and I voted to accept the withdrawal without prejudice. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Our, our, so is that all anybody has to say about any of them or are we revisiting some of these at a later date? No, I, I was good with everything else. Okay. So, I only read the ones, Mary, where I was present. I obviously didn't um, look okay. at the ones where I was not present. But other than that, we are the board's approving today the minutes of February 4th, March 4th, April 22nd, May 6th, and June 3rd. Correct. Other than those two corrections you gave me. I had one other thing. You had a... a parenthetical remark saying that you were missing some document that someone was supposed to send you? Oh, yes, it was uh, a letter in connection with Sovereign Builders. They had, it, somebody had sent them a letter backing up their claim that very few people would be visiting the storage units. Uh, and they shared it on screen with us at the time. And I asked to have them send one. It was Chris, uh, uh, Shriver, or we've got so many Chris's, and I emailed him uh, probably today. I was up doing it late last night to please send that just to so we would have it in the files as a backup to the process. I haven't heard back from him today yet, but it's a little early, you know. He he may not even be where it is today. Right, but should the minutes contain that? Oh that just no, I I I only meant that. I mean, that was a that was a notification to all of you who were going to be reading it tonight. I, I didn't mean it as part of the minutes. Um, would, should it or I would take that out of the minutes. Yeah, yeah I planned to. Did it, I, I think I left it highlighted so I would do that. But you know, I, I I certainly will take that out. That was just my message to the ZBA. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Thank okay. you. Yes, thank you very much, Mary. That's a ton of work. We've had a ton of hearings. <laughs> we have. We have been busy bees. Okay, so should we convene our 730 hearing? Yes, we are recording. Hello, Sarah. You're on mute. I, I unmuted. I have a little bit of sketchy Wi-Fi because I'm at a rental house on vacation. So uh, if I freeze a little, I think I'll come back, but it's not the best. Okay. So far, so far you're clear. So far, so good. Okay. All right. So we saw your um, setup there and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to view it. So... We also located the building inspector's letter. He referred everybody to section 171-8, which is the table of uses. I've been a little trouble here in your Robert, Roger. <laughs> yeah. Um, he referred us to 171-8, the table of uses. Yes, I can, can you hear me better, Mary? Yes. 
Okay, I, I think Roger, and correct me if I'm wrong, that he's referring to an accessory apartment, which is 171-8 under our principal use structure, under the residential use. And an accessory apartment would require a special permit in Ag 1, Ag 2, and commercial. It's not allowed in commercial industrial or industrial, but that those don't apply. So I think we're looking at our special permit. So if you turn to the accessory apartment definition. Okay. At the end, page 102, the problem that I see is there's an 800 square foot limitation. And I believe Sarah told us there was 2,000 square feet in that barn? Uh, yeah, plus the upstairs, yeah. Okay. Roger, could you say that page number again? Page 102. 102. 102, okay. So that's the maximum size within the, the zoning laws for an accessory apartment? As it's, as it's currently written. But I want to raise a question here. I don't know the answer. <clears throat> Wasn't there just an item on the town meeting to um, modify the bylaws? It, uh, Fred, do you know? There was. I don't have any details in my head right now. <laughs> yes, yes, there was, Roger. I'm looking at it. And that refers to reducing the square footage from 800 to 600 square feet. And I think that was approved at, at town meeting, but it's not effective until what the attorney general approves the changes. That's so, right. So you're saying it was an actual reduction? Yes. However, I think that that 800 square foot rule applies to a pre-existing single family home. A barn, it goes on to say, as long as the square footage remains the same and isn't altered is allowable. Oh, that's a good catch, Bob. Hang on. Does, do people want me to read that one? Or do you, Bob, do you have the clearer voice? I do, I do. Okay. Um, an accessory apartment may also be located in a pre-existing accessory structure, such as a garage or barn, provided there is no right. expansion of square footage of the accessory structure. So you're reading that as independent independent of the 800 foot requirement. Because I believe that that, it says 800 square feet of living area in a pre-existing single family home. Oh, right. That was if we made an apartment in our house. That's right. 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 Okay, all right, so that's. So let's think back to, to the two, to the two um, recent accessory uses, one on Weber Road, and the other one on Haydenville Road. And remember the planning board weighed in on that saying that they sort of liked the idea of having these other truck, they left it kind of loose. Remember the, the, the structure that was built that was, um, the whole issue revolved around whether the structure could be existing beforehand. And we asked about, well, could the structure exist for one minute before an apartment was built in it? And here we have a structure that did exist before they made it in, it was the brewery. And now it's an apartment. So that's the precedent that I was seeing on this one. Okay, so it seems like we have an avenue for Sarah to use. Do we have any um, abutters here or other people who want to speak? Everybody who is in the, who wanted to attend is in the meeting. Mike, back to, okay, you were muted. Yeah, I'm back in now, Bob, thank you. Well, from the beginning when the Howard and Michael split that, the abutters down the road were always worried about things changing and then the brewery slipped in under a uh, agricultural use, which was uh, very thin based on what they were supposed to do in order to do it. So it seems everything keeps progressing 
more and more away from where it started from. And I'm not even sure that that barn out there, is there an actual frost wall underneath that slab or is it just poured on grade? And another concern I have is the noise coming from that building because three, it'll be this Saturday, three Saturdays ago, there was drums being played in that building. I was out in my garden and it sounded like they were right next to me. Okay. Okay. And uh, I'm not a big fan of a lot of types of music, but I don't think being 600 feet away, I should be subjected to music of that, uh, that magnitude. And uh, I don't know how, how long it's going to be played because she had originally said living commercial workspace and then said he's a musician and writes stuff. So is this going to be going on all hours of the night? Are there going to be people coming in and jamming with him at different times or whatnot? Those are some of the concerns I have as well as it's uh, from the original granting of that uh, dual driveway and stuff that things are becoming way beyond the scope of what it was originally intended to do. Should I address that or is that something that you guys think on? You can address that, yes, go ahead. Um, well, I mean, I would say that if he was playing music in my house and it was like at night and people heard it and they complained, that would be a different issue, but he could do that. I mean, he could play drums in my house and that would be within our rights, right? Unless we were got a noise complaint or something like that. Um, I think during the, he tries to be respectful during the day, you know, he'll practice drums or record some drums or something like that. I, nobody has ever come to us and said, this sound is bothering me. You know, like, could you do it at certain times of day or whatever? Like nobody's ever said anything to us. We try to be respectful. Um, the driveway issue has nothing to do with the mute, the sound issue. I think they're two separate issues. What you're talking about, the town granting the driveway the 17 years ago or whenever it was, I it was granted to be used and all these buildings put on it and uh, it's evolved before we even got here. And we're talking about stepping it back from commercial, you know, and traffic and noise and events and music and stepping it back to just our personal residence. My son is a musician and he does play music back there. And he, he will have people over and play music with him, but it's not a commercial space. It's his own personal studio. Just like I'll have my own personal studio in my house. That's not a noisy art, but you know, lots of people make noise in the neighborhood. I mean, there's farm equipment all the time. There's dogs barking next door, five dogs that the Beaudrys have that bark at me while I'm gardening. You know, like, I don't think that that's really Maybe I'm wrong, but does that come into play for a zoning issue? I don't, I'm not sure. It, it can, it can, Sarah. I mean, there are noise ordinances. Um, so what's the noise ordinance? Well, first, you are hearing a complaint tonight from somebody who was bothered by the noise. And it's not that it can't be addressed. Um, I mean, we had other issues where there were concerns about noise and they can be addressed. I mean, there can be ways in which there could be soundproofing in the studio. Um, but that, I mean, that can be addressed a little later on. But during the, I mean, during the day, like that's a thing. I mean, I would get if like it was keeping somebody up at night, I would be like, of course, I'm so, so sorry. But out in your garden, I'm out in my garden, I hear so much noise you know, but I'm not complaining about everyone all around me using your TVs or, you know, dogs barking or the big farm equipment or, you know, weed whackers and all of those things. Those are big noise polluters. I just, I am, I'm not sure where, why the music is different than that because it's not his taste in music. I don't, I don't know. Roger, I, I think we're, we need to 
look at there, there's two issues here. One is the the use uh, of that building as a, an accessory residential or apartment or ADU, whatever you want to call it. And the other is uh, is the the use of the building. I guess it's kind of related to the use is kind of referenced in the requirements for for an accessory accessory building where it talks about meeting the require the environmental requirements. There's that there's parking requirements in there that apply to an accessory building. And I think some of these issues are are, are related. Uh, and I don't think we can treat it all as Maybe is is one. Uh, I I don't know. Or is one concern? I, I guess I could see a, approving it as a as an accessory apartment, but maybe not as a workspace. Say whatever you want to call the the other activity that's going on there. <clears throat> well, I mean, she applied and called it a. Um... I think a live workspace. Isn't that what it said? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Like his personal studio space. Like it's no different than me having an art space there. He's not talking about having a commercial space. My husband Lewis is gonna hop on. He's got he's got opinions too. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Hey. I I'm Lewis. Uh, I think the workspace may have confused some uh, parts of this originally. I think. Sarah, it, it, because a workspace, it, it's like, as she said, she was doing pottery or whatever. It, it, I think the question is the residence for Jack. And workspace is that he happens to be a musician or he was a potter or he was a glass blower or he, you know, was uh, someone who uh, did uh, telecommuting. I don't think, I'm not sure workspace actually. Yeah, it's not a commercial I think it space. added a, a question here that doesn't sound like it needed to be added, but that's sort of what I've been hearing as I've listened the last couple of times. Well, I think I agree with you with that. Um, as I understand, Sarah created those words without looking at the bylaw to, to, to match up what she was saying with something that's allowed in the bylaw. That's normally what you try to do is you try to <clears throat> nail something on the head that's allowed in the bylaw and say in your application, that that's what you're trying to do. And, and so live workspace is kind of a hybrid that's. I was just trying to, I was just trying to describe who he but, is and what he does. That's right. all. But here we are. So I think the live part of it is, as Bob points out, since it's a barn, is um, is doable. I heard a question there about the what type of poured floor there was that, or foundation. Do you want to at least answer that question? I, you know, I didn't build that build out that building because the brewery did. To me, it looks like it's just a poured, you know, slab or something like that. Um, you know, once we, if we get approval from zoning, obviously we're going to have to go through the building department and get, bring it up to code for a residence. We're, you know, aware of that. And I yeah. think they'll be able to address those things, but there's lots of houses <laughs> that are built poorly, but they're still allowed to be houses. Why, what was your point in asking that question? Excuse me? What was your That's point in ask, asking that question? Your point. I was just wondering because if you put interior walls on it or heaviness in there, if that's just a free floating slab, it could crack and cause uh, damage to the building itself. You know, all the work done. It already has all the walls and everything. I mean, it's all finished sheetrock walls and whatever. And oh, it's, okay. in, it's insulated, you know, it needs buttoning up and we want to, you know, add a kitchen and stuff like that. But it's completely finished inside. Okay. okay. We well, weren't even gonna add, really add more walls. We are just gonna kind of keep it the same. Oh, keep it the same. Yeah. See, I'm still confused from when uh, Mr. Lipton was saying that the way you had worded it with workspace versus you know living in workspace, that, that, got, the, that got the confusing 
what it was actually being used for. I was just trying to be like forthright, you know, like he's a musician. They said, describe, you know, what you want to do there. And I was just trying to describe it. I wasn't like, I guess I don't have any experience with the zoning stuff and bylaws and all those kinds of things. So I just, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, that's fine. Yeah. So the idea is that someone wants to live there who's um, related to her. They're, they're the owners. They're going to live in the main residence. So, so they're meeting the bullet points of the <clears throat> accessory apartment definition. The kid happens to be a musician and, and drums can be loud. Um, so, and you're 600 feet away? Yeah, approximately. Yeah. I mean, that's not really close. I think the, the requirements is property line. It doesn't say to residents or buildings or structures. Say that again, Fred. I, I think that the, the, the distance that's important is to the property line, not to adjoining buildings or structures. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's a good question. How close is it to the property line? It's within uh, two hundred within two hundred feet. I would I would guess looking at the assessor's map. There's a neighbor in between. Well, that's the distance. Yeah, that, the the um the the width of the property is one hundred and seventy six feet. I think I don't have it in front of me because I'm not yeah. at home. But oh uh, yeah, you gave, us, you gave us that, so I um, I can see it back here. Yeah. Um, well, it's got to be at least twenty five, right? Or fifty? No, oh, twenty five. I'm grabbing at numbers. I think it's 20. <laughs> uh, well, they, couldn't have built it. they couldn't have built the barn if it wasn't uh, legal, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. It was only built 17 years ago, so I can't imagine uh, there wasn't the, the setbacks and stuff then. Yeah, I think, I think that's a legal structure as constructed. So... So I think the question for the board is, all right, so there's a, a son there. He's got a um, avocation. Uh, occasionally, there's some noise that spills out. Is that enough reason to deny the request? I mean, I don't actually think so. How often do you hear those drums, sir? Oh, that was the first, that was the first time. I'm not looking to deny the request. I'm just looking, I was confused with the work part of it, residence versus workspace and possibility, you know, if it's a workspace, then you could, in my mind, work means 40 hours a week. No. So, so I think, I think I we're could, all- I could just that. address that really quickly, just to explain the way that Jack is. So it, he's a musician, because of COVID, he recorded a couple times in the house over during COVID because he was supposed to record in Los Angeles and he couldn't. So he recorded there. Mostly he's going to be out playing gigs. He tours mm -hmm. in that space. He's going to be writing music, playing some music, doing editing podcasts, which is what he does. He's a very sleeping. quiet, yeah, sleeping. <laughs> he's a very like quiet, like private person you know like he doesn't like people who he doesn't know around his house he you know he was nervous about me inviting all of you over to look at it he doesn't he would never have strangers coming to record there or events never I mean this kid is like you know he doesn't drink he doesn't smoke he doesn't uh do anything he's a vegetarian he's like into his dog that's like it you know so I like, and I get that, like, if there's an issue with the drums from time to time and somebody came to me, of course, like, we want to be good neighbors. He wants to be a good neighbor. He's really a good, good guy. So I, you know, we're just trying to live our life. We're not like, you know, trying to make a big business out of that building. He is certainly not. He just wants to be able to be himself and, you know, do his thing from time to time and live there with us, you know. Yeah, that Sarah, that explanation clears, clarifies. And like I say, I'm going from what the application said. Right. And based I mean, on that application, you know, it set off a bunch of different things in my mind because of the, the two dual uses right, right, right. from that. So right. 
that's as uh, Mr. Lipton had said earlier that it's because, you know, trying to figure out through the zoning what you wanted to put on the application and you kind of put on both to cover everything that kind of that kind of set the, the thinking of, of what was going on there. Right, right. So, I understand. So I apologize for doing that. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, right you know, that's So what's, what's your current stance on it, Mr. Becker? Are you neutral, in favor, or opposed? Uh, you know, I, I'm neutral and in favor. I mean, now that I know that it's not a commercial venture and any time going outside, stuff will be heard. Uh -huh. But if it's his residence and to do a hobby, which happens to also be his livelihood, and he wants to, you know, jam you know, trying to figure out new stuff or whatever. I was just afraid from the commercial aspect yeah. that this could have been a five day a week or more, you know, recording studio and everything else for, uh, for other people and whatnot. That's the part where the confusion came about is the original wording. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. okay. We cleared the air. I think we cleared the air. Um, yeah. So if we don't have any other particular comments, I would say that the board might be ready to vote on this. Yes, I think so. I mean, just one thing to, re to remind people that it, it's going under the special permit provision, which does have um, as, as criteria C, the project will not create significant emission of noise, dust, fumes, noxious gas, all of that. So, you know, we are, if we, if we vote in favor of this, that is our assumption. Okay. And if there is um, a violation of that, that is something you, Mr. Betcha, and the neighbors can, can bring to the building inspector. Okay. Sounds fair okay. to me. There's also a limit of two, two people in the apartment. Okay, that's it, fine. That's written into the Bible. Him and his dog. I mean, like, God willing, he'll find a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Every mother's dream. <laughs> Mr. Lipton, I have one other question, though. Yes. yes. It involves, like, with this special permit, does it just run to Sarah and her husband on this property? Or if they sell it, is that provision guaranteed to the next owner? That is a very good question. I never understood that. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, that's a very good question. <clears throat> can't, can't we make that clear and when we issue it that it is only to this owner? We can do that. Yeah. Okay, but wait a second. <laughs> if I do want to sell, like say in 10 or 15 years, if I did want to sell, mm -hmm. do I have to pull the kitchen out and all of that stuff? I oh, mean, no, 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 no. I could still sell it as is. It's still the new person. I want to have to undo what I did. No, no, it wouldn't involve the structural part, but but the new person would, would have to file for they, if they if they wanted to use it okay. as you had okay. used it. Would have to file, and the reason for that uh, condition, if we chose to do it, would be then to give the board a, a fresh. <laughs> Hope we're not on that board in 10 to 15 years, but <laughs> we probably will be. <laughs> you know, at this rate, give those new board members a, a chance to look and see what's <laughs> going on there, see who the new people are, and just, uh, you know, hear the new, whoever the neighbors are, just a, a new look at it. And, and okay. so, typically, if there's been like, you know, a long history of abuses, they might somehow take that into consideration. But if everything's been fine, that would also be a factor. So, okay. yeah. It would just okay. be a future look at who's going to be the new person doing it. That makes sense. All right. All right. So like uh, as with the previous meeting, I'll vote to close the public dialogue portion of the meeting. Second. All right. Agreed. So, uh, I think it was a very fruitful discussion. appreciate Bob's uh, pointing out the um, portion of the <clears throat> page 102 definition that could be used. It is clearly a barn. That's a very uh, <clears throat> apparent from our view and the relative view. So I would be in favor of granting the special permit. Uh, and I, I hear that we would uh, want to limit it to the current owners. And um, that would be the one condition that I would put on it. I, I, I also would vote in favor. And I would vote in favor with the condition. 
Okay, so it's granted. We have Yay. to write it up and then we have to file it with the town clerk. Then 20 days have to pass. And then you can pick up the copy with a certified stamp from the town clerk. And you have okay. to record it at the okay. registry of deeds, which is in Greenfield, the Franklin County Registry of Deeds. Okay. For that. Um, and then I go to the building inspector and get my building permit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Right. Thank you. Sure, Exciting you. times ahead, Sarah. Yes. Very. Yes. So us board members should discuss the writing up of this. Um, do you need do you need to take, I don't think you voted yet on, except you, I didn't hear from everybody on yes to granting the actual permit. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Thank you. But with the limitations that Roger um, correct with the yes. condition that the special permit be restricted to the current owners, right? Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Right. Um, enjoy the rest of your vacation. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you, you and your husband for explaining everything. Oh, of course. With clarity. And I'd like to thank the board for, you know, listening and helping me understand what was going on with this. That was part of the problem. And okay. I'm glad everything is going forward for you. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day, Kay. Thanks, Kay. Thanks. All right. So well, this the board members can stay on. So we have to, um, we have to write this up. I still have to write up the sovereign builders. Um, approval so I'm starting to feel guilty about that but I see they're still in front of the planning board so I, I don't think I've hurt their their um their use at all and I have all the minutes now so that's really good I can I can write that up but we got to write this one up too so do we have any volunteers get the next minutes out ASAP <laughs> I can I, I will write it up once I I can write up this one once um and with with Mary's help with the minutes as long as I can wait for those Okay. I will write this up and then Roger, I can like walk by your house and stick it in the mailbox. Actually, you know, we're vaccinated now. I yeah. can meet you guys. <laughs> I mean, and and Bob and and Roger, we can sign it somewhere. You could have a signing party. Yeah. A signing party. You know, yes. I think you can also leave it at town offices and then we can come and sign it there. I can it's certainly good. do that, it's Bob. I, I guess you just Whatever don't want to see us in person. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, whatever is the easiest way, just okay. let me know when you need me to. Yes. Well, it's always easy for me because I walk, I take a two mile walk every day, which goes by Roger's house. So I can always say I'm in front of your house, come out and sign this. Yeah. So, all right. I will write it up, but I, I will, I, I can, if once I, I, I mean, I feel like I could write it up now, but I'll, I'll just wait to get Mary's, Mary's minutes. I have that time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got time. All right. Okay. That's great. All right. Great, everybody. Thanks. Okay. okay.